Are you tired of dealing with that flaky, embarrassing, ugh, that just shows up on your scalp and want to embarrass you when you trying to be your freshest and your most best self? I know. Tell me about it. Dust your shoulders off. What's up, Locked Up Gang? It's your girl, Lefty Locked Up, coming to you live. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know, that felt fresh. What y'all thought? That was corny? Oh, well, I don't care. I'm living my best life. And ain't going back to fall for two. So today we're gonna talk about five tips, things that you can do right now, today, so that you can get rid of that flaky foolishness. Kick its Oh, we can't say that? My bad. So if you are interested in knowing how I deal with this, I have five tips for y'all. Yes, I said five. Five tips for you that you can implement today that's gonna help you with this flakiness. Okay, get to say, no more flakes, flake away. Is that a good theme song? All right, so if y'all interested, come with me, take a seat. There you go. Before we can get into this, we actually have to talk about what is that flakiness. That flaky culprit is dandruff. Dandruff is primarily caused by overgrowth of yeast on your scalp. And when your yeast is eating up all those oils and all your todays, yesterdays, and befores, okay, it turns into irritation, redness, itchiness, and then it also starts to make your scalp shed dead skin excessively, i.e. the flakes, okay? No more flakes. I need a theme song. Now, people that are more prone to oiliness on their skin are gonna really suffer with dandruff because that oiliness is gonna cake up on the scalp. And if you don't have a regular wash routine, which is really, I feel like the best segue. Number one, washing your hair more frequently is gonna be important. That oil layer we're needing to strip away so that our scalp is fresh and ready to breathe and, and actually can breathe, okay? You know you can suffocate your scalp. It's <gasps> crying. It needs uh, air. <laughs> washing your hair more frequently. That is the first tip I'm gonna give you. If you don't have a proper wash routine, you'll actually see this flakiness occur more frequently. And you're actually going to kind of train your scalp to keep producing flakes. So think of it this way. If you strip your skin of oil, okay, it's gonna crave the need for oil because oil is a barrier on your skin, okay? So when you're removing this barrier and you're leaving your skin bare, it is feeling like, hey, I need oil, I'm missing my barrier. So what is gonna happen is your skin is gonna produce more oil than it's normally going to produce because it's trying to overcompensate for the fact that there is a lack of oil. So in somebody's mind, you would think, huh, but if you let these things keep piling and piling up, that's how you lead to <gasps> suffocation. And then your scalp is really gonna get red, it's gonna be irritated, and you can actually start having more severe skin conditions such as psoriasis, seborrheic dermatitis. So we're gonna talk more about those things, but washing your hair is gonna be really important. I personally use natural shampoos. You do not have to use a natural shampoo if you don't want to. I will be making a video on how I make my natural shampoo, so if you all are interested in that please hit that like button okay and i will produce that video while i'm already producing it just let me know y'all interested just show me some love but i actually use a dandruff shampoo um from time to time as well or i make sure that i use things that incorporate ingredients such as tea tree oh tea tree is going to be great if you're wanting a more natural remedy for this flakiness and things like that but if you're not and you're wanting to go the more stronger medicated way there are shampoos that i will list right here that you can check out that are going to be great for your scalp just make sure you use them sparingly and use them by the direct Directions, you know, we the generation like the directions. Oh, I, I can't say that. Oh, with that being said, that brings me to point two. You're going to want to make sure that you're using a dandruff shampoo. Like I said, something that is specific to helping with skin 
problem. Something that is specific to working with irritated scalps, dandruff relief, things like that. Many dandruff shampoos possess a lot of anti-inflammatory properties, so that's gonna help, especially for those severe scalp issues, seborrheic dermatitis and psoriasis, where the skin is more lifted. That's what it's gonna look like. So if you're really concerned about whether you have a severe scalp issue or not, you're gonna wanna consult a dermatologist, okay? They'll be able to let you know specifically what condition you're working with. They also will have great recommendations on things that you can use. Other than that, like I said, you could use more natural shampoos on the other side. You could use things like African black soap, Castile soap, and then you can add in things like tea tree. You can also add in rosemary. That's a great herb for scalp health. I do a lot of infused shampoos for those moments when you have that redness that irritation you know you just don't want to touch your scalp it hurts so much because you've been scratching it getting in there <laughs> these herbs are the medicine okay these herbs are the medicine tell them lyrically locked up told you about it it's the medicine oh my god wow so that's gonna bring me to step three use apple cider vinegar i'm gonna do a shameless plug there's a video I'm gonna link right here up above. I don't even know. I think it might be this side. When you see a link pop up, click that thing, okay? Well, watch this video first before you click too far and then come back, click it, open a new screen, and then come back and watch this, and then go watch that one. Ah! Tips! There's gonna be a video here where I show you how you can use an apple cider vinegar rinse solution to help with your scalp between washes and also more of like a spot treatment. You can really get in there with that apple cider vinegar and that's going to, I mean, don't let these fools fool you, okay? Nature got some medicine out there for you, accessible. It don't cost $200, $500 a bottle. Shade. So what apple cider vinegar does is actually a pH balance. It keeps your skin at a level. You know, if it's too basic or if it's too acidic, your scalp is going to start having those reactions, the dryness, the itchiness, all of the irritation. You're gonna start seeing that when your pH balance is off. So that apple cider vinegar comes in like, dun, 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 dun. I'm going to save the day, and it really does. Now, I do have a plug. If you're gonna put it on your hair, make sure that you dilute it. You're not gonna to wanna to put straight apple cider vinegar on your skin think about it vinegar skin sounds like fire okay y'all so tip number four here that I have is you're gonna want to I'm about to lose several people you're gonna have to change your diet did I lose you great uh, you're gonna want to change your diet because what you're consuming in your body no matter what you do to the external it will always show your body is going to tell you what's going on on the inside. You're starting to see all these skin conditions, breakouts on your face, things like that, where your body is telling you that inside there's some type of imbalance. So we're going to need to check that. We start from the inside. Okay, so you're going to want to make sure that your water intake is on ones. My schedule. Did she just interrupt me? I'm telling y'all these tools. Y'all seen Smart House? I guess she tapped into a virtual projection component and learned how to create a visual embodiment. I, I thought you said you shut down the system. That's what's scaring me. I did. You're going to want to change your diet. You're going to want to put better ingredients inside your body. Things that have omega-3s, omega-6s, fatty acids, those are going to be great for your hair and strengthening. You're going to also want to make sure that you avoid eating a lot of sugar because sugar is the main component that's going to be producing yeast. And the more sugar you intake, the more yeast that you produce, which is the more flakes you're going to have. So you want to make sure that you lower that sugar and that's not just eating sweets. That's also carbohydrates. If you overeat a lot of carbs, those carbs convert over into sugar, glucose, and as a lot of glucose also can lead to things like diabetes. You're going to want to make sure that you're eating vegetables, okay? Berries. Berries are great, you know, because they have a lot of antioxidants and things like that. Less of the carbs, less of the processed things. Those things are going to really be blocking up all of those cuticles, edges, all of them. Your stomach, hot girl, hot boy, summer, cancel, okay? And last but not least, I wanna talk about 
herbal hair rinse. I just love herbal hair rinses. I'm gonna speak highly on them forever and ever and ever because herbal hair rinses are, again, one, natural, two, natural, three, natural. Okay, see, th this is important because these herbs have benefits in them, okay? And actually, all of the ingredients a lot of times that they are making these products with are broken down versions of these herbs. Not only are herbal hair rinse is gonna help put those vitamins and nutrients into your hair, but it's also going to be a form of conditioning. So it's not gonna strip your hair. If you're a person that's looking for a way to deep condition your locks, herbal hair rinses are the way to go. I do my herbal hair rinses when I wash my hair. That's a step that I do right after the shampoo. If you don't want to buy the ingredients and all those things for you to make, the herbal hair rinses you can buy them I do personally make one myself you can check down in the description box okay and I will have the link for the website where you can go purchase one okay or purchase a pack of them but if you do want to try to make one I do have up here you will see a video that I have about herbal hair rinses. It's gonna talk about all the best herbs I feel that you should use for your herbal hair rinses, how to make them, how to apply them. It has all the steps. So if you're looking for that information, check one of those sides. So there you have it, y'all. Those are the five tips. I hope that was truly helpful. Make sure you implement these things and give it some time, okay? This is not something that's gonna just happen overnight. This is gonna be a process, a journey. Just like your lock journey, just like you going through that process, this is gonna be a process with you and your scalp. So, if you're looking for some more videos and some fresh content to watch for your locks, make sure you click on this video right here. Why? Because it got me in it. And why else? Because I got locks. And why else? Viva! I'll see y'all in the next video. Stay locked up! <laughs>